Archaeological discoveries are always interesting. Finding out more about the people and places that came before us will never be boring. And that's why the latest news in archaeology is always worth reporting. Some discoveries are more exciting than others, though. Much as we enjoy it when an archaeologist can tell us everything about the discovery they've just made, we get more excited when they find something that they can't explain at all. That's what this video is about. Archaeological mysteries that remain unexplained. There may be no bigger mystery in South American archaeology than the existence of the colossal Olmec stone heads. These giant sculptures were created around 2,900 years ago, and nobody knows why. We're not even really sure how the stone that was used to make the sculptures was carried from the Sierra de los Tuxlas Mountains in Veracruz, Mexico, and carried almost 100 miles in some cases. Given that the largest of the heads weigh 50 tons, that would have been an enormous operation for the people of the time, accomplished by uncertain means. The level of effort involved in transporting the stones and carving the faces upon them implies that each face represents someone of enormous importance, but we have no way of knowing who. It's most likely that they were all Olmec leaders, but we can't directly confirm that to be the case. Some historians have interpreted the facial features depicted on the statues as African and suggested that they could serve as evidence of pre-Columbian contact between African and South American peoples, but most experts dismiss those claims. Speaking of pre-Columbian times in the Americas, what are we to make of these stone disks, which have been recovered from sites all over the south of California? Archaeologists have taken to referring to them as cog stones because of their shape, but it's unlikely that they were ever part of any machine. Their purpose remains a mystery. Historians have pointed out that there's more than a passing resemblance between these so-called cog stones and the equally controversial bronze gears that were uncovered in Peru some time ago. But a link between the two sets of artifacts hasn't yet been established. The majority of the stones can be found in the Santa Ana River Valley, raising the possibility that an ancient and unknown civilization was based there in the distant past. While it's never easy to provide a precise date for stone artifacts, scientists think that the majority of the stones were carved between five and 8,000 years ago. Strangely, many of the stones have a perforation in the center that's perfectly square in shape. We'd use machinery to achieve such a perfect shape if we were making these stone objects today. But how these ancient craftspeople managed to do it without such technology in the past is unknown. In the Zanjan region of Iran, there's an ancient salt mine that has a habit of turning up mummies that nobody can explain. Most of them are so well preserved that they still have their beards and white hair attached to their heads. While archaeologists try to establish who these people were and where they came from, they've used the label Salt Men of Iran to describe them until they come up with a more apt description. Such are the extreme conditions deep within the mine that even the mummy's internal organs have survived in near-perfect condition. The first of the salt men to be discovered is around 1,700 years old and still had a gold earring attached to his ear when he was found. Human activity in the mine goes back much further than that, though. The oldest of the six mummies to be found so far has been proved by carbon dating to be more than 11,000 years old. Historians have speculated that the men's unusual appearance with their short noses and protruding jaws might have served as the inspiration for the creatures known as satyrs that appear in Roman and Greek mythology. During the 1950s, a fossil collector named Francis Tully discovered an extremely strange-looking fossil in the Mason Creek fossil beds of Illinois, USA. He'd never seen anything like it before, so he took it to a nearby museum in the hope that the paleontologists there could help him. They couldn't. The 300 million year old fossil is so unlike anything that experts have ever seen before that they can't even say whether it's a vertebrate or an invertebrate. It's the only example of its species that's ever been discovered, and it's been named Tullamonstrum, or to give it its more commonly used nickname, 
the Tully Monster. The creature's body is akin to that of a slug, but it has claws where a slug ought to have a mouth. The eyes of the monster protrude away from the body on stalks. Obviously, if it had a spine, that would make it totally different from a slug. But we are no closer to getting an answer to that question than we were 70 years ago. Although many scientists in the past have claimed to have proven whether the Tully monster is a vertebrate or not, their findings are always disputed by other scientists who claim to have equally compelling evidence. The traditional view of Neanderthals, the hominid species that came before human beings many thousands of years ago, is that they were lumbering ape-like creatures with limited intelligence. Increasingly, we're finding scientific and archaeological evidence that this might not have been the case. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is this network of stone rings inside the Brunicale Cave in France, which was built around 176,000 years ago. That's a full 40,000 years before human beings first appeared in Europe. To archaeologists, this is the Neanderthal equivalent of Stonehenge. The circles are made from stalagmites and stalactites, both of which occur naturally in the cave. There's no chance that these circles are a natural formation, though. They've been cut down to size and then carefully arranged into circles. Forensic examination of the ground inside the circles has revealed the presence of burned bones and soot stains, seemingly confirming that the circles were used as a form of fire containment. That would suggest that Neanderthals could make fire, which would have been thought impossible until a few years ago. While we're on the topic of strange discoveries in caves, let's talk about the enduring mystery of the Bull Rock Cave in Moravia, Czech Republic. When archaeologists first arrived to perform a detailed examination of the site in the late 19th century, they found that it had a pretty gruesome history. There are human remains here that seem to come from multiple different eras and civilizations, including what appears to be a whole settlement that belonged to the Celts. There's also a mass grave inside the cave, which might date all the way back to the Paleolithic era of 100,000 years ago. The first few discoveries made inside the cave, including a beautiful bronze bull statue, probably carved by Celtic settlers 2,500 years ago, were fascinating and pleasant artifacts to find. The next few discoveries were anything but. Inside the mass grave were the skeletons of 40 young females and one man. Some were beheaded. Others had their limbs amputated. Two severed hands were found still on the altar upon which the amputation had presumably taken place. Next to it was a skull cleaved in half. Historians have speculated that this might indicate cult activity within the cave, but they can't prove it. In 1934, Archaeologists discovered a beautifully painted vase in the city of Liria, Spain, close to the coast of the Mediterranean. Almost 100 years later, we don't know much more about its history than the experts did on the day they found it. It's thought that the vase is about 2,200 years old, which would mean that it was made in a time when Liria was known as Edita and was a self-ruling city-state of old Iberia because the paintings on the artifact depict soldiers on horseback and men armed with swords and spears, it's become known as the Iberian Warrior Vase. Historians aren't sure whether the battle depicted on the vase is real or imagined. They're also not quite sure what the vase was used for. Scientific examination of the vessel's interior has suggested that it was never used to store food, but might have been used to carry liquid, which may have been water or wine. If that's the case, then perhaps the vase had a ceremonial use. Whoever made the vase was exceptionally gifted. The pottery is barely three millimeters thick at its thinnest point. Nothing from the same era even vaguely comparable to this in terms of quality and detail has ever been found elsewhere in Spain. Why is it that there are so many holes drilled into the rocks that line the banks of the River Nile in Sudan? That's a question that's bugged archaeologists for decades. The holes have clearly been drilled by human hands, and therefore must have had a purpose. 
The latest school of thought on the matter is that they might have been used to support temporary shelters. If the theory is correct, the holes would have housed wooden poles upon which material or animal skins could be draped to form a crude protective barrier against the elements. While that might explain the purpose of the holes, it doesn't help us understand how they were made. Archaeologists believe that they were created approximately 8,000 years ago. Back then, metal would have been difficult to come by in this part of the world, so the question of how deep holes could be drilled into solid rock with such precision is a difficult one to answer. Once again, we're forced to conclude that the people of the distant past were more adept with technology than we sometimes like to imagine. A little over 170 years ago, archaeologists discovered the fossil of a strange, cone-shaped sea creature that has defied any attempt to classify it ever since, despite the fact that over 1,000 examples of fossils of the same creature have been discovered since at locations all over Canada and the United States of America. The creatures, known as hyaliths, lived around 500 million years ago and became extinct about 200 million years later. They had conical shells, tentacles that were probably used for feeding, and short limbs that could loosely be described as feet. They're one of the earliest known examples of creatures with external skeletons. For a long time, it was thought that they might be distantly related to squids or snails. But a more recent study by a student from the University of Toronto has suggested that they might have more in common with brachiopods. Brachiopods sustain themselves by sweeping organic material suspended in water into their mouths using tentacles, which is probably how hyaliths went about the same task. Without any soft tissue to analyze, though, it's difficult to say for sure. When you're looking for a way to pass the time, you might consider playing a board game. That's a tradition that goes back thousands of years. To be more specific, in China it goes back something like 2,300 years, and perhaps even longer. We can say that with certainty thanks to the discovery of a series of pieces from an ancient Chinese board game in 2016. Archaeologists believe that the game was either called Bo or Luibo, and was especially popular in the region around Qingzhou City. It was in an ancient tomb in that area that the discovery was made. Among the pieces found was a die with 14 sides carved out of an animal tooth, with each number between 1 and 6 appearing twice on the die, plus two blank spaces. A further 21 rectangular game pieces were also found at the same site, all of which have numbers painted on them. In addition, the experts found what they believed to be a piece of the board game, upon which two eyes are drawn, surrounded by clouds and lightning. Sadly, they are unable to shed any light on the rules of the game. Otherwise, we'd be able to start playing it today. The line of technological advancements that ended with the creation of the computer was started by the invention of the abacus. If we accept that statement as fact, then we can consider this tiny Chinese abacus ring the world's first piece of wearable technology. The impressive piece of practical jewelry was made about 300 years ago, during the Chinese Qing Dynasty. The device is square and only half an inch tall and wide. You'd need to carry a very small pin around with you to get any practical use out of it. It's simply too small and delicate to be operated with fingers. These rings were called Jusans and were used by traders and market stall owners to quickly calculate prices on the spot so they could agree on purchases or sales. Unfortunately, history doesn't tell us when the first Zhushan was made or who came up with the concept. Whoever that person was, they came up with an on-the-spot mathematical aid that wouldn't be bettered until the invention of the electronic calculator in the 1960s. The name of the Fountain of 99 Spouts in Lacchia, Italy, tells you almost everything that historians and archaeologists know about the monument. We can tell you that it's a beautiful thing to look at, but we have no idea who made it or why. It's most likely a product of the medieval era, and the fact that each of the faces carved around the fountain's 99 spouts 
has unique facial features, suggests that they are representations of real people. It's possible that they might be depictions of people who were influential in the city during the 13th century. But that wouldn't explain why they're surrounded by pagan symbols, half-human, half-animal creatures, and demonic figures. For a long time, it was assumed that each spout represented one of the many castles that used to stand in this part of the world. But more recent research has proven that there were only 70 castles here at most, and even that figure might be a stretch. Why are there 99 spouts? Why did the architect decide that stopping at 99 was a better idea than making it a nice round 100? We don't know, because we don't even know who the architect was. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.